Hello programmers! Today we're going to talk about file input and output, but we're going to start with what we know already. So at the beginning of every program so far, I've had include IO stream. And the IO stream stands for input and output stream. And every time we've been using C out, that is actually an output stream object. And you can think of a stream like a stream flowing in the um, in nature, how it almost seems like there's an endless amount of water. Well, it can seem like you can send as much um, to see out as you want to. Like within reason, you can, you can just print whatever you want to see out. And as far as reading in from the user typing in at the keyboard, we've got the see in object. And that's also courtesy of this IO stream. Uh, header and that is an object of type input stream so we can read in from the user using the extraction operator we're like extracting it from the user typing in at the keyboard we're going to store into a variable so we've got our insertion operator and our extraction operator and they work with our output stream and our input stream objects so if I run this little program I'm going to print to the screen I love C++ and then it's waiting 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 because there's a CN statement waiting for me to type in a string so I'm just gonna type in hi and then I'm gonna print that to the screen okay so I'm doing input and output but I'm only using standard input and standard output which is the keyboard and the screen as a default unless I redirect those let's switch this and I already included the header we're gonna need F stream now F stream is good for reading in input from our files or um, storing the output instead of just to the screen, we could store it to a file. Um, so I'm going to just show, um, zoom in on this PowerPoint slide and show you just a corner of it. So the output stream is like C out is a, a object of type output stream is a parent class. And we've got a child class that inherits from that OF stream output file stream and we've got to use this pound include to get that output file stream and everything we learned about the parent class that still applies to the child class meaning the child class still knows how to use the insertion operator so how do we open a file for writing well I'm going to do that right now I will go ahead and make an object and it's not of type int or string it's of type output file stream so an output file stream, I'll give the variable a name f out, short for file output, and then I'll give the file a name file.txt. Now, this is an object, just like the other objects you've created, and we're calling a constructor, and the constructor has, there's more than one constructor, it's overloaded. One way to call the constructor is to pass in the name of the file, and it will automatically try to open that for writing if we've got an output file stream. And now, instead of writing I love C++ to the screen, I'm gonna write it to that F out object, that output file stream object, and I'll just comment this out for now. Uh, and this is enough to start with. When I run this, it's not gonna be quite as exciting when I look at the output. In fact, it's gonna be kind of blank when I look at the output because instead of writing to the screen, I've written to a file. And finding out where this file is stored on Visual Studio, for me, it's not trivial. Um, but let me show you the trick I use. So if you're looking at where things are stored, you can always click on them in the Solution Explorer and then look down below at the project file and the path where everything for that project is stored. And here's where I found the solution file, but I'm going to delve even deeper and go into this project one folder. That's where I'm going to find the .cpp files, if there's any header files. And I'm also going to find the text file that I just created. So exciting. And I can see right here it says I love C++. Um, be nice to zoom in on that, but I don't actually know how to do that right at the moment. So we're just going to ignore that and move on to reading in from files. So we just wrote to a file, um, that's pretty exciting. For good practice, we should probably close that file when we're done writing to it, and I would do that with fl.close. All right, let's try reading from a file. So we need to read from a file and store it somewhere. I'm gonna store it in this variable x. And instead of reading in from the user typing it at the keyboard, I'm going to create another file. It's an input file stream and I'll call it fn, and I'm going to read that file that I just created. 
So from here, instead of CN, I'll make that FN, and I want to print to the screen whatever it is that I find when I run this program. So we'll go ahead and start it. And it's not the exciting I love C++ that I wrote to the file, it's just the first word. So why is that? Well, the default behavior for the insertion operator um, actually, we're on the extraction operator. The extraction operator is to stop when it sees a space or a new line character, um, and we see a space after I. If we want to switch this and read in the whole line until we get to a uh, new line character, I'm going to do get line, and I'm going to pass in, you could pass in CN if you're reading input from the user typing at the keyboard, but we're reading in from a file, so my first input is going to be the input file stream object and the second is going to be the object where I want to store them. So let's try running this again and this time hopefully I should read in the entire first line of the file and my variable x now has I love C++. Isn't that true? Alright, that's enough uh, for now. I guess to be even uh, even better practice here, I really should close that file once I'm done using it. Um, and that is the end of this lecture.